In our last video, we covered Excel Draw, how you can draw objects, and how you can export those objects into a DXL. In this video, I'm going to be diving a little bit deeper into Excel Draw, and we're going to be going over how to use every single object inside of Excel Draw so you can create your own drawings. For those of you who missed our last video, Excel Draw is a unique add-in for Microsoft Excel that creates CAD-style DXF drawings directly inside of Microsoft Excel. If you open up Excel, you may notice that Excel Draw is not installed by default. We have the add-in available on the desktop whenever you install the application, and if you would like to, it to run every single time that you open up Excel, then you're going to need to run the macro, enable it, and then you're going to want to go to Excel Draw and go all the way over to the About section and click Install slash Uninstall. When you do this, it's going to come up with a window that says Excel Draw was successfully installed. This option makes it so it runs and installs. You don't have to go in and manually enable and disable the add-ins. It does it automatically for you, and whenever you do updates, it will automatically apply, and you'll never have to look at it again. So if I just click OK here, and I close out of Excel, I can open it right back up, and it's going to be available for me right here at the top. Before we get started with adding in objects, I want to point out to you the activation window. You can activate your Excel Draw program by going to Activation. A new window is going to be brought up right here where it allows you to put in your code. Whenever you do have a license number, you can just plug it in here. You go to Activate. If you would like to transfer your license, then all you have to do is type in your license here deactivate license and that will allow you to transport your license to another machine. So even though you just buy one license, you can use that license as many times as you want to activate as many machines as you want as long as it just has one activation running at a time. Now the first thing that you want to do whenever you determine what object you want to create is to see if it has Z values included or not. This is very important whenever we get down to the more advanced objects like the text arc circle that we have down here, but for line point rectangles, those are pretty straightforward and similar to how they are in AutoCAD or any other CAD application. You have your starting points of XYZ and your ending points of XYZ respectively. They are called X1, Y1, Z1 for starting points and 2 for the second or the ending ending points. Now, if you have Z values, then you are going to want to toggle on Z values included, but Z values are not required. Now, the first one that we are going to do, we are going to create a line that goes from 00, 0 to 0, 05, and we're going to do this without having Z values enabled, and I'm going to go up here, and I'm just going to select my values. Notice I do not select everything, and I do not select the title I just select the values. We're going to have the values selected and we're going to create whatever object this is. And in this case, it's going to be a line. So whenever we draw the line, you're going to see that it drew a line from the zero point to the positive five in Y. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing for this line. However, I'm going to include Z values in it. So as you can see, it starts off at the 0, 0, 0 and goes to 5, 5, 1. So it should give us a line that stretches up to right about here. We're going to select all the data values. We're going to enable Z values and then we're going to click line. And as you can see, we now have a line that is drawn from 0, 0, 0 to 551. Next, we're going to look at points. Points are very simple. All you have to do is just plug in the one location that they're at because they are just a point. They have no other values. It's just a dot. So I'm going to plug this in with the Z height of 2. Make sure that we do have Z values enabled and we're just going to click point. And as you can see, we added in a point. Rectangles are next, and rectangles are laid out a little bit differently than the rest of them, where it still has a starting point with the X, Y's, and Z's in one, and an ending point with the twos. What it doesn't tell you is that the starting point is always going to be at the 
bottom left hand corner while the end point is always going to be at the top right hand corner so your box is literally that right there so you start here and go up that is how AutoCAD and Excel Draw lays out rectangles. So once you know that, then you can put in your starting location, your ending location, and you can create a rectangle. And I'm going to do that again without Z values. Now rounded rectangles are a little bit special because they actually have rounded corners. So same format as before, starting point and ending point. Whenever you have that data selected, all you have to do is go up to rounded rectangle. And as you can see, we now have a rectangle that has been added that has rounded corners. Now we move into our more advanced objects. Now they still are modeled after AutoCAD with the way that they format. So if you're used to AutoCAD, this will be second nature to you. So with text, first one we're looking at, you want to start off with where the text is located at. So for instance, if we look over here and we have this text here, this is text, and we have that starting in this cell. Well, AutoCAD will automatically look at the bottom left hand corner of where that text begins and that is going to be your starting location so with this the starting location is going to be negative 7 10 and 0 so it'll be right around this area here now in the x2 slot that is where you're going to put in your words so for instance we're going to make a writing of text a text object that has the words sample drawing in it now next two optional declarations these are available in both the z value included and not included options you just have to know that they're there to be able to use them if you want to specify a specific font size all you have to do is put in your font size here in the y2 if you want to specify a specific color for your font then you can put that in the color spot on Z2. Now the color is special because this goes off of the AutoCAD color index. This is different than RGB formats, but we do have a function available inside of Excel Draw that will convert RGB into an ACI number for you. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to leave the color blank, I'm going to leave the font size blank, and so I can show you, I'm just going to select the data here, I'm going to say Z values are included, and I'm going to generate text. And as you can see, we have sample drawing up at the top. If we want to change the text size, like I mentioned to you, all we have to do is go in here and we can change this text size to whatever we want. Then we can generate the graph and it just grew in size. So let's change that back down. Let's put it at two. That should be about where we need it at. What you see here as far as the font is just a very simplistic font that's available inside of Excel Draw. When you export this into AutoCAD or you export it into a DXF, it's going to come up with the default font. If you'd like to change this font, we do have two different fonts inside of Excel Draw. You can go over here to the default font style, change it to one, which is a little bit cleaner, but it also takes a little bit more processing power too. If you'd like to test out the color, then all you have to do is just plug in a number here that corresponds with a color index in CAD. So for instance, two is yellow, one I believe is red, and you can, you know, you can kind of gauge which color you want, test it out, see what works best for you. Next, we're going to look at a circle. X1, Y1, Z1 is going to be the dead center of the circle, wherever it's going to be, while X2 is going to be the radius, so how wide it is on every side. Go ahead, select our data, make sure we have Z values included, and we're going to hit circle. And as you can see, we now have a circle drawn on our DXF file. Next, we're going to be looking at an arc. An arc takes the same basic format that a circle has, except it adds in a starting degree and an ending degree. So we're going to go ahead and have the XYZ be the dead center of a circle, radius of 12, while we say we're going to start it at 0 degrees and we're going to end it at 90 degrees. Select this and go to arc. And as you can see, we started at zero degrees, we ended at 90. 
The next object we're looking at is a polygon. We took the same calculations that we did with creating a circle and we just allow you to create different angles and radii with that. So we have the same starting location, X, Y, Z, dead center of a circle or the polygon that you want to create. Next is the radius, same thing as a circle. And finally, how many corners or how many points do you want in your polygon? The final one, which is Z2, is going to be the rotation. So you can have it at an angle or at a rotation and it will generate for you a polygon in that rotation. I'm just going to leave that set to zero and we're going to generate a polygon. And as you can see, it's going to have a five-sided polygon rotated at zero degrees. So started at zero degrees and went five directions around. Next, I'm going to be showing you the Smart Create tool inside of Excel Draw. With this tool, all you have to do is specify what the item is. There are some specific file names or object names that you can use, but I do have a list available for that. I'll show you in a later video whenever we get into automation. But what you can do is you can have these objects on there. For instance, we're going to have a circle or a bunch of circles. We're going to have them linked to different formulas. So for instance, these formulas up here, and we are going to go ahead ahead and drag these down. So we're just going to select these, make these formulas here, this minus one, and we'll do the same thing with this one minus one. We'll select these, bring them down. And as you can see, we just generated ourselves some data. We're going to select all of these with the object name selected and we're going to hit smart create and what it's going to do it's going to look at the first column see the object name and then it's going to create whatever the object is for us all at once so this is really handy for whenever you're doing automation or you would like to use vba to export data into a sheet and then use excel draw to just automatically generate it for you very handy the next thing that I wanted to show you is a new feature inside of version 6.2, and that is cells to CAD. Very simply, you just select your range of cells that you would like to convert over into CAD or a DXF drawing, and just click cells to CAD. It'll come up with a little window for you. You can specify the font size and things like that. But one really neat feature in this is you can actually use formulas like this. You can do text-based formulas such as where you just plug in equals and then an actual text string. Not only that, you can change the colors of this to be whatever you want it to be and the CAD index will automatically sort through the numbers to see which number best matches the color that you chose. It also works with merge cells and if a cell does not have a border around it, it will not draw a border. So the borders around this will automatically translate into your DXF drawing. If we just select the data that we want or the cell range, collect cells to CAD, we can adjust the size of the font. So let's say we want it to be at two to match the other one that we have. And we can actually specify even where we want the XYZ values to start. Now, something that is different with this is the XYZ values. It starts with the default location of Excel, where CAD's default location is the bottom left-hand corner. Excel's default location is the top left hand corner. So your zero zero point is going to be right here while the other points are going to be below that. So basically wherever you plot your data, it's going to be at negative numbers, which is perfectly fine for me because I don't really need it to be in any specific place. I would like the text to be lower on the screen than what we currently have in the drawing. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to bump this down to a negative five in the Y and I'm hoping that will be enough. I'm just going to go ahead and create this. It's going to generate a new page for me and it has all of our data right there and it's generated. If you don't see it right off, that is simply because we're probably zoomed in too close or too far away in this instance. Let's just zoom out and you'll be able to see your data that you made. 
Now in the future update, what I plan to do is I would like to be able to incorporate this to where it automatically imports into another drawing that you currently have available. But for right now, it's a very simple process of copying the data over. So we're just going to copy this data over. We're going to go back to our other drawing. We're going to scroll down, paste it in. And then now that we have all of our data selected, all we need to do to get this to populate inside of our drawing that we have here is just make sure we have Z values included and click Smart Create. It will loop through all the different objects that we have available here and it will put them into our current drawing. Okay, and we have that here. Let's go ahead, bring up our 3D graph rotation window. We'll go ahead and zoom that out so we can see more of it. And there you have it. We have everything that we made all right there in view. So we have our drawing, we have all of our objects. Let's export this into a CAD viewer so we can better see it. Let's go to export DXF. We agree with this window and we're going to say test export with some colors and we're going to hit include colors. This will include all the colors that we currently have as well as the text override colors. And we'll go to export. Would you like to open it? Yes, we would. And as you can see, we now have our text. We have the different colors. And if we rotate this around, you can now see in all the glorious detail of 3D. Okay, so thank you all very much. This is all of the objects that you can create inside of Excel Draw. I hope you have a better understanding of what Excel Draw can be used for. If you have any questions, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. If you'd like to try Excel Draw out for yourself, it is available on our website. Links in the description down below. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.